Soloing Secrets, this is Mark Knopfler, another legend of the guitar, and Mark hit the scene in the late 70s with Dire Straits, and shortly after the release of their self-titled debut album, which is right there on the wall, they erupted in popularity. Of course, Sultans of Swing was a big reason for that, and that's still one of their most famous songs. And they continued, they erupted again, you know, in the 80s, Money for Nothing, I mean, that literally kind of defined the MTV, you know, era. But Mark's a very interesting guitarist, and we've looked at his playing before, there's a Three for All episode for him. Also the chords of Dire Straits, you know, chord play episode. And this episode is going to do a deep dive into his playing style and reveal some of his secrets and playing habits and licks and stuff like that. So here we go. So just like we've done in other episodes of the Soloing Secrets series, when you're focusing on a certain guitarist or musician, it's always beneficial to notice their influences and really notice, you know, like who influenced them and inspired them when they were younger or as their career unfolded. And with Mark Knopfler, there's a whole bunch of great players. Hank Marvin, B.B. King, Eric Clapton. But here's an image with some of Mark Knopfler's influences. And then aside from Dire Straits and Mark's own solo material, he's collaborated and worked with a lot of people, a lot of studio sessions and guest appearances and live concert appearances and stuff like that. So here's an image with some of the people that Mark's worked with in his career so far. So honestly, I approached this episode completely different compared to other episodes I've created in the Soloing Secret series. And instead of going through multiple albums and pulling licks and phrases, we're actually going to target very specific things in Mark's playing style. Namely, his chord tone soloing, you know, playing over chords and chord progressions and targeting notes. His finger style, you know, finger picking technique. Lots of bending phrases and, and melodic phrases and stuff like that. There's a lot hiding, you know, in this lesson. But here's an image with uh, Mark's elusive soloing secrets. So just a heads up, but this entire episode I'm going to be using a clean tone with no overdrive and no distortion, and a secret weapon for those clean-minded guitarists, and Mark Knopfler's included, is a compressor. And I did flash an image at the beginning of this episode, but this is the you know, MXR Dynacomp, and this is the setting I'm using. And that setting is kind of nicknamed Snake Eyes, where the output is all the way up and the sensitivity is all the way off. And you can see, you know, the markings or whatever kind of resemble, I guess, snake eyes. But this pedal is interesting because it, it kind of, it really does thrive with these kind of mirror settings where you kind of set, you know, the knobs, you know, almost like in a mirror fashion. And you can find some really interesting tones that way. But that is the setting I'm using. And compression is really just going to kind of give you more volume, it kind of beefs up your, you know, your sound, especially if you're using a clean tone or slightly overdrive tone. It makes, you know, your playing and everything you do stand out louder, more dynamic, and kind of gives it more punch, too. If you watched the previous episode, which was the Doors chord play episode, and we were looking at Robbie Krieger and finger picking, you know, through that material, and we're still finger picking in this lesson, so now we're doing Mark Knopfler's finger style. 
And here's an image kind of showing, you know, his right hand and his finger picking finger style technique. And you'll notice he puts his third finger and pinky on the face of the guitar and then uses his thumb, index, and middle, something like that. But here's an image showing Mark's, you know, picking hand. So with the opening jam, that's not really a Dire Straits song or a Mark Knopfler tune. That's really just me playing over a chord progression, but I was sprinkling in a bunch of Mark Knopfler licks and ideas and some of the things we're going to look at in this episode. And with that chord progression, that was really just D minor, like that, and G minor, back to that D minor, and then A7. minor 4, and then a major 5 chord, so that's signaling D harmonic minor, right? We've talked about that progression a lot on this channel, but D minor, G minor, D minor, A7, 1, 4, 1, 5. And then I was doing a bunch of, you know, Mark Knopfler-esque licks. I was doing this little melody, uh, what was that? up this kind of D minor melody and then when that chord changes the G minor you know I was targeting that B flat right right there which is the minor third of G and when I hit that note it really popped over that G minor chord right and then when it goes to A I did right and I targeted that C sharp right there which is part of A7 that type of stuff from Mark's playing is very common. He does stuff like that all the time, and he definitely is a thinking man's player because he's constantly thinking and targeting, you know, over the chord progression that he plays, like in, in songs or in solos and stuff. So he's constantly kind of weaving and thinking and targeting. Really cool stuff. And then there were some other licks in there. I did this thing. And that's basically out of this position of D minor pentatonic ending right there. You know, really cool and kind of different bending like there. And I was doing, of course, some of those arpeggios in there. And just targeting things, you know, kind of in the style of Mark Knopfler. So we're going to hit some of that stuff that I just kind of breezed through in this episode. So here we go. Okay, this first area is basically finger picking pentatonic scales because let's be honest, if you always use a pick and you don't really finger pick, finger picking like Mark is gonna feel really weird and awkward at first. And you gotta start somewhere here. So if you're a finger picker, this is gonna be really easy. And if you're not really a finger picker, this is gonna be a challenge. So let's just do a D minor pentatonic scale. And I'm gonna mimic Mark's, you know, kind of technique, you know, thumb, index, and middle. I'm not gonna use my third or pinky. And I'm not really going to worry about planting, you know, my fingers on the face of the guitar like Mark does. I'm going to kind of do this my own way. But you'll notice I'm going to do a lot of thumb and middle, and then occasionally use that index finger like this. And just go real slow, but thumb, middle, thumb, middle, thumb, middle, thumb, middle. And if you want to get some index in there, you could do thumb, middle, thumb, index, thumb, middle, thumb. some more practice. Right? So there's, you know, position four, we'll call it, right there. Let's go all the way up to position one, like the box right there, D minor pentatonic here. Right? Just that really common box. But now we're finger picking. two positions. You know, we've got position four and the box. And then there's this position right here, which Mark does seem to like this position. We'll call that position five. Right? Now, as far as this, you know, you know, targeting over chords, you know, if you think of D minor, you know, the three chord tones in D minor, you know, D, F, and A, 
all three of those notes exist in D minor pentatonic, so we don't have to change or alter anything because they're right there. <laughs> arpeggios. You know, and you're playing those chord tones. And as we move ahead, you're going to see as we change to G minor and we change to that A7, you're going to see we're going to start targeting some different things. But just keep in mind, there's D minor pentatonic. And we're, you're basically aware of where the D, the F, and the A are. And then as we continue, we're going to continue doing that, but remember that. Chord tones. Okay, so there was D minor, that's the one chord, right? And now when that chord progression changes to G minor, which is the minor four chord, we're gonna change things ever so slightly. So we're gonna continue using D minor pentatonic, which was right here. But we're gonna start adding B flat. And you might be thinking, well, why are we adding B flat? Well, B flat relates to G minor. That's the minor third of the G minor chord. And if you look at the notes, you know, that we, we have in the D minor pentatonic scale, uh, we already have a G and we already have a D. Those two notes naturally exist. You know, there's your D, there's G, there's D, there's G, right? So B flat doesn't exist in D minor pentatonic, and we're going to add that. And that's the minor third of G. That scale, you know, here's A, there's B flat right there, so the second note right off the bat is B flat. There's that B flat again, so think D minor pentatonic, but we're adding B flat right there, right there, and right there. sounds like over G minor, which I'm going to loop this. So there's D minor pentatonic. And listen to that B flat, it sounds so good. Right there, adding you know B flat to that D minor pentatonic scale. Now let's do that with the other shapes. So let's go to uh, shape five right here. And right off the bat, uh, when we move from here, um, you're gonna see parts of that because there's D minor pentatonic here. B flat. So we're going to basically cruise up here. Don't worry about grabbing it, you know, back there. Just continue up. Right? And then right there, um, there's your B flat. It's right there, too. So when you cruise up there, you're grabbing it here. And right there, too. and do the same thing. Look for B flat. So here's D minor pentatonic. And there's B flat right there. And then we're going to basically you know, catch it again over here like this. Right there. There's only two places there in the box to find it. Here. Same thing, you know, think D minor pentatonic, but target that B flat, and we're playing that over G minor. Right? There's that B flat. 
When that A7 chord comes in, there's a very expressive and important note that you need to hit. And we're definitely hitting harmonic minor. So you can definitely play harmonic minor scale, you know, licks and stuff. You know, over this progression, that's going to fit perfectly. Um, but what we're kind of doing here is kind of marks, you know, kind of pentatonic targeting. So think D minor pentatonic like we had earlier. But now um, we're going to basically change C to C sharp, okay? Because that's the you know the major third of that A7 chord. Now normally in D minor pentatonic we have a C natural, that flat seven. But then when you hear that harmonic minor kind of push or rub, it's that C sharp, right? So what we're going to do now is we're going to modify the scale because there's D minor pentatonic. So right off the bat, you know, A to C sharp, and then D to F, and then G to A, and then there's C sharp again right there. And also that, you know, second to last note right there, there's C sharp again. So now, you know, we've changed notes. C sharp. Uh, A7 chord. You can kind of hear how that fits, you know. So definitely Mark would weave, you know, harmonic minor, but then sometimes he would just twist out of, you know, minor pentatonic into harmonic minor. So there's, you know, A right here with, um, uh, I guess, D minor pentatonic with a, a major 7. Which that's D, not D minor pentatonic anymore. But right there. C-sharp, also you know, keep in mind where the C-sharp is up there. And that next position right here, it actually starts with C-sharp. Right, and then we have another one right there, which you could stretch. Or you could uh, reach over here, like that, and then scoot up. Finally, with the box right here, just start it, you know, as normal with that D note. And then there's your C sharp right there on the D string. And then continue up. And you got another C sharp right here, so you can stretch it like that. You can also bend with that C sharp if you wanted to. Or you could reach back and grab C sharp there on the high E string. But as you can see, we're just taking that minor pentatonic scale and modifying it to fit over that A7 chord. So we're using D minor pentatonic, but we're making it sound like D harmonic minor, which is really cool. And Mark the master at this, you know, check out Sultan's a Swing if you really want to see this type of approach, you know, I mean, just knocked out of the park. I mean, that's a classic song, but Mark's playing and targeting over those chords in that tune. It's brilliant and you know, definitely uh, highly recommended if you haven't worked on, you know, Sultan's a Swing. Tackle that song. It'll shape up your playing big time. Now, speaking of targeting over the five chord, and also speaking of Sultan's of Swing, you know, there's some great examples of him targeting, you know, hitting this harmonic minor kind of flavor in that song. And there's a section, you know, where it basically moves to A. And then he basically grabs this B and then bends that a whole step to C sharp. And then there's that targeted, you know, third of A. And it kind of gives it that harmonic minor flavor. Think of Sultan's a Swing and you'll hear that. And then moves to D, but that's just like a, a moment of that A, you know, kind of ringing in the background, and that C sharp brings out that D harmonic minor flavor. And then you can find tons of examples of this in that song. So let's just kind of walk through this progression we're playing with. So this isn't the Sultan's of Swing progression, just that D uh, minor, G minor, D minor, A7 progression we've been playing with. But right here, let's just target, you know, D, but we're going to bend this E in and out of the third. So E, F, E, D. Like that. And we're kind of targeting that minor third, the F. Right? Let's do it again 
over the G minor right there. So grab, you know, this A, bend that up a half step to B flat, bring it back to A, and then end on that D. And I'm also kind of snapping the strings there. I'm pulling the string away from the body of the guitar. Just to really make those notes kind of pop and jump like that. And then over the A7, oh, there was the D minor, G minor. You can go back to D minor again. And then when it goes to A7, we're going to basically grab this B, bend that up a whole step to C sharp. Right? And there's that, you know, B to C sharp, B to A. And then you can definitely hear it waiting for that final, you know, D note at the end right there. that kind of thing. And there, once again, we're kind of playing. You know, we're playing with those thirds, but we're bending them. And Mark does that kind of stuff all the time. When we start doing this and we start modifying or adding notes to that minor pentatonic scale, you know, over this chord progression that we're targeting, we're basically flirting with arpeggios or those, you know, our chord tonalities, really. The D minor pentatonic over D minor, you know, match perfectly and then D minor pentatonic over G minor, and we started adding that B flat. And we were kind of bringing out the sound, you know, of that chord or that tonality, you know, by adding that B flat. And the same thing over the A7. You know, we were targeting, you know, E and A, but we really started targeting that C sharp. And that really popped or jumped, you know, when we got to that chord. And of course it implied that harmonic minor. Really, we're just kind of flirting with arpeggios and chord tonalities. So let's think about that. Let's think of arpeggios. There's, you know, D minor right here. You know, and if you're not used to finger picking arpeggios, that's kind of cool. And then you can modify that. And let's think of uh, G minor seven right there. So we're gonna do. We're gonna grab that same F note there on the top. But there's, you know, D. There's G. There's B flat. D and that F. stretch all the way up and grab that high G up here. But we're just going to keep that F. So there was D minor, G, you know, minor 7, go back to D minor, and then you could do A major right here. You know, it's kind of interesting how it's right there, it's all in the same neighborhood. Definitely, you know, those are kind of more like sweep shapes. And Mark, you know, will play those, but definitely during the opening jam, also you can hear this in Sultans of Swing, you know, Mark really excels at these fast kind of pivot arpeggios like this. And right there, that's just D minor on the top two strings. And you're just doing this kind of pivot pull-off move right there. Modify that right there, it's an implied, you know, G minor 7. Back to D minor. And that's an implied A major right there, because there's your A, C sharp, and E. And definitely check out Sultans of Swing if you want to hear more of that action. And, uh, and you could apply that over other chords and progressions and stuff. Really cool idea, and I love those pivot arpeggio ideas. All right, that's going to wrap this episode of Solomon Secrets with this look at Mark Knopfler. And definitely, he's a very hard nut to crack, I guess you could say, because Mark's playing style is really hard to emulate. It's really hard to play a Dire Straits song, and it actually sounds like Mark Knopfler, you know, like you're imitating him or whatever. He's a tough player. It's like Jeff Beck, and there's some Ingve and some players like that. It's, you know, you can learn their song, but it's really hard to make it sound like them because it has such a signature, you know, distinct sound or flavor when they play it. And David Gilmore, there's a whole bunch of players like that where it's like, man, I can't make it sound like him. And with Mark Knopfler, I mean, definitely he's the king of this kind of finger style, finger picking, plucky, clucky kind of thing. And it's really hard to cop that sound and it sounds authentic. And that's part of the reason why I approached this lesson this way. You know, instead of challenging everybody and myself, with these crazy Mark Knopfler licks, I thought, why don't we do kind of more of an overview kind of primer 
and ease into some of those licks. Because after you've worked with some of these ideas I've shared here, you should have an easier time learning some of Mark's ideas. So anyway, leave some feedback and comments. Please subscribe to my lessons, and I'll be back before you know with more content and material. Thank you.